Hello everyone, this is Eric with Game Ball, the gaming trackball mouse. In this getting started video, I'm going to help you get up to speed with your brand new Game Ball thumb trackball. I'm going to cover the basics, I'll cover the system settings, um, we'll go over some maintenance, and then I will cover how to get support. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, let's get you started with your game ball thumb. Uh, this is the basics. So I'll talk a little bit about trackballs, uh, where to put your hand, how long it'll take to get used to it, uh, plugging it in, getting started, you know, all, all, the, all the basics. Uh, so, so first off, this is a trackball, um, different from a regular computer mouse. In a computer mouse, you move the whole unit to move the cursor. Of course, on a trackball, you're moving the ball, whether that's with your thumb or with your fingers, um, but that's how trackballs work. Um, so if you want to get more information on the history and all the details of trackballs, you can watch some of our other videos or you can do a search online. Uh, but effectively, you're moving the cursor around with your thumb on Game Ball Thumb. So let's talk about the, the button assignments. So this is your, your left click, your right click, your scroll wheel with your middle click, um, your precision button, uh, which what that does is when you're moving the cursor around the screen, if it's moving too fast, you press that and it goes into a precision mode for fine movements. You press it again and it goes back into normal. Um, your forward uh, button, your back button, and on the side over here, there's two more buttons. This one changes your RGB lighting, so you just press that to cycle through those. The, there's also a setting to be able to turn that off completely if you don't want any RGB lighting. Uh, this button right here controls your native DPI settings, so you'll press that and it'll cycle through the, the various levels. It goes from 300 to 5000 DPI, and when you press it, it'll change color showing you what level you're in. Uh, so whether it, it's you know red, green, blue, uh, orange, kind of orangish yellow, and then purple, and purple being the 5000 DPI. Your default is the first setting, which is red, which is 300 DPI or dots per inch. That's how, again, how, how fast the cursor moves around the screen. The higher that number, the faster the cursor is going to move. Um, so what the default is, is the green, which is 600 DPI. That's what it should ship in. That's what I, I recommend most people starting getting started with is at uh, 600 DPI. If you find that's too slow, um, you can bump it up a little bit. Uh, the reason why it's blinking red right now, and if it looks a little bit different on this on the camera there, this might look a little orange, but um, it's actually red. Then that's just saying that it's charging right now. So again, those are the the buttons. Now, where do I put my hands? For for most people, you're just going to want to put your index finger on your left click, your middle finger on your right click. Uh, that'll allow you to reach the the scroll wheel, precision button, etc. And then of course your thumb on the ball. Now, um, some people like a little bit more of a claw grip, and that could be further back, that could be further up. Um, some people will use the, the trackball at the back part of the ball, some a little bit higher up, some on the side. You don't typically move too many large movements, so you, you, you have a general area where you're normally using the ball. Um, so you're gonna wanna slide your hand to a, a spot that's comfortable for you. Um, I generally like my index and ring, ring fingers on the sides of the scroll wheel. Um, and then I use the back part of the ball here. That's just what's comfortable for me. Um, what you're gonna wanna play with also is rotating your hand maybe a little bit more left. Maybe you like it over here, maybe a little bit more right. Whether or not you like a claw grip, forward, back, all those different things. Uh, please spend some time on that. It's very important and it will, it will drastically uh, change your experience with a trackball is the comfort level and where you put your hand. So spend some time, invest some time on that and getting it what's comfortable for you. Um, you know, again, and, and, and pay attention not only just to how the hand sits on there, but also how it's angled, which will make a difference. You do have an, an angle base. So if you wanted to lay a little bit more flat, um, you can put it down like that, or you can press that and pop it back up. Um, most people I think are going to like it angled up. That's the way I like it as well. That's what's most comfortable for me, but, but play around with that as well. Uh, you know, what, what's more comfortable for you and you just kind of push on the unit to, to cycle that there. Um, to plug it in, you can either use a wireless uh, USB dongle. So you plug that in and it'll automatically communicate, uh, or you can use the cable. If the cable is plugged in, that takes priority. Um, so if, you're wondering why you can't communicate wireless if your cable's plugged in, uh, that's why. So um, if you wanna communicate wirelessly, you'll, uh, you'll unplug the, the USB cable here. Now, it is a USB-C cable. It's a braided cable. I think it's a pretty good cable, but if you ever wanna replace it, you can get yourself a, uh, a regular USB-C cable, um, plug it in there. That's how you'll charge it, of course, um, you know, when the, when the battery's running low. Uh, so really, whichever way, they both run at 1,000 hertz. 
So whether you're sitting on the couch and communicating wireless or plugged in on your desktop, um, you're both getting a, a thousand hertz communication. Um, but just know if, if you have the cable plugged into your computer, now you can plug it in to charge it and still communicate via wireless if this is just plugged into the wall or plugged into something to give it power, then it's of course going to communicate via wirelessly. But if it's plugged into a computer or the computer that you want to use it on, it's going to default to the cable connection there. So that's the, the connection. That's kind of the real basics on how it gets started. Um, it will take you 30, 40 hours probably to get comfortable with this trackball if you've never used it before. Of course, if you're coming from a thumb trackball, this will take you no time. If you're coming from a finger trackball, it'll take you a little bit of time. But invest about 30 to 40 hours to get comfortable with it if you've never used a trackball before. It will get better over time. So at first, if you've never used a thumb trackball, it will feel very weird. And then every hour you put into it, it's going to get better and better. But on average, I'd say it's going to take about 30 hours for you to get comfortable with it. Uh, so those are the, the basics of Game Ball Thumb. Uh, let's go ahead and go into the system settings now. All right, so let's get into the system settings for your Game Ball Thumb. Uh, first thing is there is no software needed for Game Ball. So you plug it in and it's going to work. It uses standard mouse drivers. So for Windows, Mac, Linux, Xbox, PlayStation, anything that uses a uh, that will use a regular computer mouse, uh, Game Ball works. So just plug it in and you are ready to go. Uh, so no additional software needed. The settings for like the RGB settings and some of that is, st is saved on the mouse, the DPI settings and RGB settings. If you do have some settings like you swap the mouse buttons within Windows and I'll talk about that, uh, that of course will be uh, computer specific so you'll have to change that if you transfer this between different uh, different computers. But the RGB lighting and the DPI settings, uh, anything like that will be saved onto the unit itself. So again you just plug it in and you're ready to go. So let's talk a little bit more about the, the DPI settings there. Let me bring up the manual. If you do want to find this manual, you can go to, to our website and there's a under the support tab, you'll see that there's manuals for both the original Game Ball and Game Ball Thumb and you can download this. But I want to talk a little bit more about the DPI settings up here. I mentioned this earlier, but I want to go into a little bit more detail. Um, first off, you have anywhere from 300 to 5,000 DPI or dots per inch. It's technically really counts per inch, but that's that's how fast the cursor moves around the screen. So, like I mentioned before, this little guy, this little button back here, you press that, this button, this light will change color, and it'll tell you what level in. That's that's uh, the blue color, so it's at 2,000 DPI. If I press it again, it's going to go to that uh, orange color. That's 3,000 DPI. You'll see the cursor's moving a little bit faster around around the screen. Press it again. That'll go to purple, and that's the fastest. So that's 5,000. So that's jumping all over the screen. Uh, some people like that. Some people don't. It kind of depends on, on your preferences there, and I'll talk about the acceleration and how that works here in a minute. Uh, but I'm going to take it back to green, which is the default setting, and this is probably what I'd recommend for you. And again, you, you know, this is fairly smooth movements. Um, this may be too slow for you. You know, maybe you go up to the light blue setting and it's a little bit faster to move around the screen. Um, so that, that will depend on kind of your preference. I would, however, recommend uh, some form of acceleration. And what that means is the faster you move the cursor, uh, you know, as far as the across, the faster you move your thumb across the ball, the faster the cursor is going to speed up and move. So without acceleration, you know, if you just move it one, uh, one rotation across the ball, it'll go a certain speed. But if you move it fast, you see it jumps all the way across the speed. I have uh, acceleration turned on right now. Um, it's a default for a lot of operating systems. I think it's a default for Windows as well. Um, if you want to go into to Windows, let me just bring up my control panel here and you just go into your mouse settings. You can go into uh, pointer options here and it's this button right here called Enhance Pointer Precision. So you'll click on that and that turns on acceleration. Um, I don't know why they don't call it acceleration. I would put your, your pointer speed right there in the middle and then turn that on. That's going to work for the vast majority of users. Uh, again, this isn't with, within Windows. Uh, Mac has similar settings built in. Linux has similar settings built in. But look for mouse acceleration. I am a big believer that trackball mice uh, benefit uh, greatly from using acceleration. Uh, I actually, and the reason why I don't have this check mark is I use a, a third-party program called RawXL where it does a little bit better job 
is within as opposed to the Windows default program of managing your your DPI acceleration gains and curves and things like that. So I'm not going to get into into detail on that. There's a lot of uh, videos you can watch on on it, but I would recommend some level of acceleration uh, for your for your game ball. I think it'll benefit. Uh, you know, you want to have those fine movements, but then you also want to be able to zip across the screen really easily as well. Um, so having acceleration will, will do that for you, uh, whether it be raw Excel or just the Windows one. Again, for the majority of people, just make sure this, this right here is checkmarked. Uh, put this in the middle and make sure that is checkmarked right there. On the same little thing, if you want to change buttons, there's a little button tab here. You can switch your primary and secondary uh, buttons. So if you want to switch you know, your left and right, um, you can do that. Um, so you just uh, check mark that and it's going to switch your left and your right buttons. Uh, Mac has a similar setting. Linux has similar settings, things like that. There's also some third-party software out there, um, Xmouse and others, that will give you more control over button assignments and things like that. Uh, but the easiest one and the most common one people like is to switch that left and right mouse button, and that's just right there in the EOS will give you that ability. Um, so if you want to do that. So in here as well is your uh, scroll wheel settings. So if your scroll wheel isn't moving, let me bring up a, a browser here. If you're scrolling and it's too slow, if you want to be able to speed that scroll speed up, um, you can go back to your settings there and you can change the following, you know, how many lines you want it to scroll on any given time. So if you really want to bump that up, let's say we'll go up to 10 there. And if I go back over here to uh, this window, now when I scroll, it's going to it's going to go further. It's going to scroll more of the page. Um, just one thing you could also do too, um, if you want to scroll a little bit faster, if you press the middle mouse button, this doesn't work in every application, but most browsers will do this. If you press the middle mouse button, you notice the cursor will change, and now I can scroll with the ball, and the, the faster I move it, the further I move it from the center point, the faster it will scroll too. So that's a, a little way of doing a scroll there. Um, if you're ever on a screen that does horizontal scrolling, I think I have one of them up. Yeah, let me bring this over here. Um, you know, you can always just hold down the shift button and then use your scroll wheel and this will scroll horizontally. Um, this doesn't, again, work in everything, but on a lot of applications it will. Again, I'm holding the shift button down. You can't see that with my left hand, but then I'm scrolling with the scroll wheel. And then without the shift button, you can scroll up and down uh, vertically. So that's your 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 scroll settings. Play with those, get those to the settings that uh, that make sense for you. Uh, I think the default is three. I think that's where I had mine set at, but uh, I'm just going to hit cancel here. But uh, go ahead and play with that until you get comfortable with uh, the scroll settings that you want. So for charging your, your game ball thumb, like I mentioned, you just plug it in. This little light right here is going to blink red while it's charging, and it's going to uh, turn green once it's fully charged. If you go to the manual, go to the second page here, it usually takes about an hour, hour and a half to charge. If if you know you're doing anything with the the trackball, um, it's going to drain the battery, and this this will blink quite a bit. So um, you won't see the green light for very long. Uh, as soon as you start using, it, it's going to start blinking again. But um, know if you have it on there for about an hour, hour and a half, it should have a full charge on there. That should last about a month, um, but it's going to depend on your usage and uh, you know how much you're using the, the device, things like that. Uh, so I, I say about a month on average. You can definitely get more than that. You can, you can definitely get yet less, but I would say about a month on average. So you plug it in uh, to charge it. You unplug it, use it wireless. You'll get about a month use of average use out of it before you have to charge it again. So that's how the, the, the charging works. Again, I mentioned there's there's third-party applications out there like Xmouse and other other applications. Uh, Macintosh has some things that will help with you know the the smoothing out the scrolling and, and various features. Um, you're welcome to try those out. Those aren't our applications, and of course they'll have to be installed on that computer. So if you have Raw Excel, for example, installed on your home computer, and you want the same thing at your work computer, then of course you got to install it on both computers and set up the settings the same. So those are the, the, the settings for Game Ball Thumb and kind of to help get you started with it. Uh, again, just like your hand position, spend some time on the DPI settings, 
get that to ha you know what feels very comfortable with you uh, so that you're moving around the screen nice and smooth that the ball movement is comfortable it's not too jittery uh, keep in mind you do have the precision button so you press that and it goes into fine movements and you press it again so that can help maybe sometimes depending on the the, the settings that you want but uh, play with those DPI settings get it to a level that you're comfortable with uh, play around with different acceleration softwares um, at least do the the default one like in Windows it's that enhanced pointer precision um, at least do that if you want to do something more advanced then you can go into like a raw Excel or something along those lines so we're gonna go on to the maintenance section and we will talk to you soon okay so let's talk about maintaining your game ball thumb so one, one thing that with trackballs is, uh, the, you know, because you're man manipulating the ball with your fingers, it has a tendency to build up grime and dirt on the, the, the bearings where the ball uh, sits and rolls off of. Um, so you, you are gonna wanna clean that out periodically. Um, you know, with a finger track ball, like our game ball, you take it out, you clean the little bearings. Um, it does take a little bit more work with the, the game ball thumb. You're gonna wanna close the base uh, the best thing to use is a is a is a pencil um, with the eraser end, so you don't damage the ball. You could use a Q-tip, uh, but I just use a pencil, and you're going to push the ball out right there. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to take a microfiber cloth, you know, various t ones. You know, these are for cleaning your glasses, and you'll see in there those those little white bearings. Um, that's where most of the the dirt and grime is going to collect. Uh, so you're going to want to get in there with these with the cloth, clean that all out, wipe it out. There is a hole where if you shake it, it'll fall out or you can just turn it up and shake out anything that might have fallen out there. Um, but get in there with a cleaning cloth. It's about, you know, it, it, for me, it's maybe every couple of weeks. For most people, it might be once a month. If you're a really heavy user, it might be, you know, every, every, every few days you're gonna wanna get in there and clean there. But if you notice the ball isn't tracking very well or maybe skipping, um, it could just be very well that the, uh, the, the there's dirt and debris uh, uh, on, on these bearings. So again, you're going to want to get in there and clean that out. So how often should you, you know, clean the unit, clean the unit? Again, that's going to vary depending on your environment, uh, the humidity levels, uh, all those different things. You're just going to want to just get, get a microfiber cloth, get it wet. I, I would not recommend any cleaning agents, any chemicals, anything like that. Just use water and you're just gonna wipe this thing down every once in a while, you know, do that for the ball as well. Um, and then just wipe away any, any grime that might be on the, on the unit. Um, you know, it does collect on, your, on, the, on the scroll wheel, so you're gonna wanna get in there and clean that. Again, if you have to, just turn it upside down to shake it to get any, any of the, the, the debris out of there. Um, I, I typically don't recommend uh, oil uh, on, the, on the bearings. I know some people, We'll use different types of oils and things. The, the only one that I would recommend, and I, I had this on the other video, is around your nose uh, and your cheeks, uh, your body uh, produces what's called sebum oil, um, which is a pretty light oil. So, you know, you can actually take the ball, rub it near your nose, um, kind of near the bridge of your nose uh, next to your cheek, uh, and it'll, it'll, it'll put some oil on the ball, put that in there, and that will uh, sometimes help it that's not required that's really preference whether or not you like it just know if you do that or put any oil or any type of thing in there um, any type of lubricant it's going to collect more dirt and grime faster um, so just keep that in mind if, if you are going to use any type of oil um, again don't recommend using any cleaners anything that's you know any any type of bleaches or cleaning chemicals just use water to wipe it down um, that's going to give you the best performance and the longest life out of out of your game ball thumb so that's how you maintain it. Um, let's go ahead and dive into support. Okay, so let's talk about support for your game ball thumb. So the first thing I'd recommend is going to our website. It's www.gamingtrackball.com. Um, I'll have the link below. And on there, you're gonna find um, news and updates. You'll also find a uh, support page, which will have contact information. You'll find the user manual on there, um, troubleshooting tips, uh, maintenance tips, all the latest is gonna be on there. So if things change, um, look to the website for always the latest to, to get support. Um, if you have any questions with uh, shipping issues, warranties, refunds, anything like that, you'll find our contact information on that website and that's how you'll get started with that process as well. Um, so I do want to say thank you for watching the video. Uh, I appreciate you supporting us. We're still a very small operation. Uh, it took us five years to get the finger track ball out and another two to three to get this thumb, thumb track ball out. So um, thank you for the patience. 
uh, and supporting a small team like that, I really appreciate it. So have fun with your game ball thumb. Thank you.